decent people shouldn't live here. They'd be happier someplace else. Worst, Worst marathon ever. 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 Hey, everybody, welcome to another Worst Marathon Ever episode. <laughs> are we calling it Worst Marathon Ever? Uh, I mean, met- so far we are two for two, but. <laughs> so here we are. I'm Big Anklevich. And I'm Rich Outfield. And it's another That Gets My Goat episode, Marathon, that perhaps may be the worst ever. I don't know if we've officially branded it as that or if we're going to come up with something better. We'll see. We will see. I wanted to talk to you about... Heck, I'm just going to get it out of the way because it's late at night. Why a fiction? You know, I don't know when this thing first started, but it's got to stop. No, <laughs> uh, I don't know when YA first became a thing, but I missed it. Suddenly, YA was everywhere, and it took me a while to even figure out what the YA stood for. Stands for you a-hole, right? Oh, shoot. See? Okay, so all this time I've thought it stood for something else. But... You a-hole fiction. <laughs> But I, I had in my mind an idea of what YA fiction encompassed, what kind of books that would be. You know, I, I haven't read a lot of books, and so trying to retroactively shelve the books that I've read that might be YA and say, oh, okay, well, this, you know, this, this seems to fit into that category. Real quick, since we didn't say it, YA stands for young adult, right? I think that's what it actually stands for. Okay. Moving on. But, you know, having actually experienced a little bit of what passes for YA, it started to occur to me that I don't really know what the prerequisites are. It may be one of those things, like smut, where, you know, I can't define it, but I know it when I see it. (laughs) Everybody may have their own definition of what, what is YA, And here's what my understanding was. You have a children's book section, and you have an adult book section, and YA is what would be in between. Even though it's a young adult, what is a young adult? Are we young adults? Uh, No. Um, (laughs) it, it, It may be that 20 years ago there was a section called teen, and YA has supplanted that, but teens are not young adults. So I don't, I, I really don't know what YA meant, but I just figured, okay, well, if it's not exactly a children's book, but it's not, you know, going to be a graphic depiction of of adult topics, we call it YA. But honestly, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. There, I know there are a few, like there's the juvenile section. Okay, what's that? Which is a category, and I think that might be what you would call tweens, a kind of before teen age stuff. You get stuff that's good for kids basically through like elementary school and maybe the first year of middle school or something like that i don't know but not to the second year yeah by then they need to have they will hate it yeah i think juvenile would fit your what are those movies they keep making every year that kid grumpy kid diary of a wimpy diary of a wimpy kid there you go that would fit in the juvenile category but uh, I'm not sure why they call it YA as young adult instead of teen. Because I think young adult YA is supposed to be teen oriented. Yeah. And it's like, you know, 13 to 17, 18 years old is what people would read a YA. And it, you know, Harry Potter. Okay, where is Harry Potter fit? The, the hard thing is Harry Potter is a progression. I think when Harry Potter starts... The first book or two would fit in juvenile, but then the rest of them would fit in YA, but I'm not really sure. Generally, I know the one big definer of those kind of things, I think, is just the age of the uh, main character, and your character is generally going to be at the high end of the age range, you know what I mean? So if like it's supposed to be for 13 to 17 to 18, 18 year olds, then your main character is going to be 17 or 18 um, as opposed to 13 because generally they, they assume that somebody who's 17 is not going to read about a 13 year old because that's stupid and babyish and old. Um, they don't want to care about that. They're in, all into the, the older stuff. Then they're, you know, they're not going to deal with some book about a 13 year old. You, only a 7 year old would read that keep going so you can be louder and more obnoxious 
<laughs> so uh, yeah, I think that's one of those. But things a thirteen-year-old aspires to be seventeen-year-old, right? And they can get their rocks off reading about a seventeen-year-old, and a seventeen-year-old can get their rocks off reading about a seventeen-year-old because hey, that's what I am. That's them, right? And so they're on the very edge, but it, you know they're on the edge. So once they're eighteen, then oh, and now I got to read an adult book about a twenty-two-year-old or something. Um, mm. But yeah, I think it's the same kind of thing. You know, you you got Percy Jackson. I think. I think the same kind of thing where he started out on the high end of juvenile and then moved into YA because at first they're 13 or, you know, Harry Potter was 13 or whatever when they started, but then he goes through his progression and it ends with him at the top end being 18 or whatever. But yeah, your diary of a wimpy kid is about a kid who's in middle school, which is top end of your juvenile. What is middle school again? It's like so I didn't have it's that. Seventh, eighth grade. Okay, it's pre-junior high, right? But post it's, elementary. No, it is junior high. M- middle school is what they call junior high in the old days. Oh, okay, you always say that. That's right. They middle to, school and junior high are the same thing. Yeah, they used to be called always junior high, and then at some point, about the time that I was getting into ju- junior high, they thought, "Oh, we need to change this to middle school now," and I'm not sure why. But well, because my, kids won't go if they hear yeah. junior in the title. Yeah, when I uh, went to Carnegie Junior High School, they changed their name somewhere in the middle of it to Carnegie Middle School. I shouldn't care. We're talking about YA, which <laughs> I shouldn't care about. Also. Okay, so the, 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 the characters are teenagers. That that typifies, that that tells you, hey, we're reading a YA book. But in my naivete, I thought, well, okay, there's got to be certain restrictions on content too, for it to qualify for a YA book. I just figured, well, let's think of it as as movie ratings. You know what I mean? A YA book is a PG thirteen PG movie. You know what I mean? You're going to get in certain things, but you're not going to get other certain things Uh uh-huh and that was my assumption and i i I don't know but anyhow the book i'm reading now and i'm sad if i'm sorry if this makes me seem petty or closed-minded or like my sister where she heard about the hunger games after she had read it and and i told you that she said if she had known that it was science fiction she never would have read it and how disappointed in her i was when i heard that but I think this book I'm reading right now, if somebody had said this is a YA book, I don't know that I would have read it. I, I, but partly it's the end result. If this is hindsight speaking, because I have not enjoyed the book. But I assumed, okay, well, you're not going to get a lot of cursing, you're not going to get a lot of violence, and you're not going to get a lot of sex in a YA book. But this particular book that I'm reading right now has violence beyond the level I have ever read in a book. Coming from somebody who's read Stephen King, who's read Jack Ketchum, who's read Clive Barker. Lucio Fulci level is what I said on Facebook. Violence and gore in this book, where I'm just like, holy crap, man. I'm a grown man and I am sickened by this. But of course, no profanity at all. And it's a completely asexual world where there could never be, you know, even touching of boobies, let alone intercourse. And it just, it felt so lopsided to me. It was like, wow, because it was as though, as though the writer were purposely trying to make a statement that says profanity and sex are bad in America. But you can be as violent as you want to be, and I'm going to take it to the extreme to prove a point. F you guys! And I'm sure he wasn't doing that, because a book wouldn't get published. <laughs> Would it? I don't know. If that were the case. But, I, I mean, just the, the violence... I mean, it's not just violence, but it's explicit gore. And not explicit gore like a slasher movie, but like gore involving children which you don't even see in a slasher movie. And, and, and granted, our taste buds, our palates, are very different from a movie as, than they are from a book. 
Because in a movie, I guess you're seeing it and suddenly somebody says, think of the children. But in a book, somebody has to have actually read it to say, think of the children. And a lot of those think of the children people cannot read. You know what I mean? You imagine it in your head. You haven't actually seen, you know, a child's brain splattered across the floor. Thank you. Anyway, I, I guess I just wanted to complain because of that, because of the content, this doesn't seem right for me. But it's also making me re-examine what is YA and what is the target audience for a book like this. But and now that you know that it means you a-hole, you understand. <laughs> I guess so, but who is the a-hole here? Is it the reader? Is it the writer? Is it the main character? Is it the, <laughs> the, the attitude of the writer toward the target audience? Anyway, that's a rhetorical thing. But I wanted to ask you, you've read a lot of YA, I would assume. Because you've read a lot of books, and that's all that's being published. Pretty um, much, yeah. Help me out here. Um, I don't know. I mean, I've read some, like... Yeah, it seems like there, there are levels of acceptability. And this book that you're talking about seems like it has gone well beyond that. You know, there is... It, it, it's, it's, it's generally kind of along the lines of a PG-13 movie. You get some swearing but not a whole lot you'll get some violence but not a whole lot unless it's the lone ranger you'll get some sex some like just starting into it kind of stuff really just discovering it because it's about teenagers and that's the subjects that they're interested in um for example i think of the uh the cory doctorow movie little brother the book Oh, sorry. Yeah, that's what I meant to say. I said movie, but it, it was a book, not a movie. The Cory Doctorow book, Little Brother, where he has his first lay in that one. And uh, I was actually somewhat surprised by that, to but, but the truth. For sure, that's a YA book. It's not just yeah, Doctorow writes science fiction and this is science fiction. No, yeah. Doctorow, this one is particularly a YA book. And he started doing that where he'd put out a YA book and then he'd put out a adult book and then he'd do another YA book and... That was his first YA book, I believe. Now, you don't know Corey, right? He used to come over to the house and we'd have a few beers, but no, I don't know him at all. I'm just joking. Why? Why the YA book and then the... Is it something that he'd always wanted to write or is this his publisher saying, dude, our Action. pencil pusher guys <laughs> have said this. They're going to send out their Italian New York speaking spokesman to explain to you why you need a YA book. Well, I know that, for one, Cory Doctorow is a very socially conscious kind of a person. He's really trying to push uh, the envelope in certain kind of agendas and that kind of stuff. He works for, or it has worked at least, for uh, the copyright, what, what is the name of that thing? The Electronic Frontiers Foundation or something like that, where they're trying to get copyright laws fixed and all that kind of stuff. And it's all about internet freedoms and etc etc a lot of those kind of things and so i'm sure part of it has to do with you know it's much easier to get these ideas across to the young generation and then they grow up thinking that and then things change um but also i'm sure it's got to do with you can get another audience you know why not sell you know you can't sell this book to the kids so why don't you write a book that you can sell the kids and now you get another paycheck kind of thing because i mean that's smart as a writer, it's like it's like uh, when you're a movie maker or whatever, and you try and appeal to several different. Target what do audiences. they call that? The, the demographic corners, or the what did you four call quadrants? It? Four quadrants. That's it. Yeah, trying to hit all the quadrants, kind of a thing. You're going to make more money, and I'm sure it's got part of it because authors are businessmen. They're putting out a product, so I'm sure it's got as much to do with that as his other things. But I think that's probably why. I, well, that's interesting. I mean, that he would, that he would, I wanted to say vacillate, that he would alternate between adult and then YA and then adult and YA. It seems like there's some kind of method to his madness there, but it also feels like when movie stars will do one for them and one for me, you know oh, what I mean? Right. That's something in Hollywood they talk about where a, a movie star has a deal with Warner Brothers and we'll make a movie that will make Warner Brothers a lot of mo money, but... In return, they have to make this movie that I'm passionate about, a smaller movie, a movie that's probably not going to make a lot of money, but it's going to keep me happy. That's something that they tend to do, and I wondered if that might be the case with Corey, if you're doing this and then, and then this, 
And if the YA books just be on, on account of being in that section of the bookstore, sell more copies. Yeah, it's interesting that, you know, where did that come from? I think it's all just because of Harry Potter. Somehow Harry Potter just exploded and sold so many books and basically turned children onto reading in a way that they just weren't before. And all of a sudden, they're like, okay, well, I read all the Harry Potters. What else is there? And so all of a sudden, everybody just like, shoot, we got to get some product. Some product. You see what I'm doing there? Didn't we complain about that? Well, when was that? Was that at the uh, New Media Expo where we were complaining about business speak? They kept saying they, product. Yeah. They say words like product instead of products. <laughs> Somehow that's a plural word now, product. We need to get product out there that they can buy. And so, yeah, they put out product. Dozens and dozens of YA books so kids can... Now they're done with Harry Potter. Well, heck, we got uh, the series of unfortunate events, and we've got the Percy Jackson, and we've got, you know, all these other series that have now appeared, The Vampire Diaries. That's an older one, though, isn't it? I don't know. But etc. All these things have appeared so they can start buying them up and... uh, have something to read once they're done with Harry Potter because they're like, whoa! Suddenly they're awakened to the the wider world. Well, that's good, and that's something I say a lot about Twilight to you and to no one else is if it gets them reading, then there's not it's not wholly negative. But the thought that Harry Potter created this whole demand for books like that I mean, it's good! But it's also kind of amazing and kind of horrible at the same time. Harry Potter, those books are magical because kids love them, teens love them, old pieces of crap like me love them. They seem to, they're the four quadrant things that Uh we were just talking about. Not everything is going to be that. And it doesn't matter to me as a not young adult that Harry is 11 years old in that first book. And that the oldest we ever see him, except for in the epilogue, is 18 or 17. It doesn't matter to me because I'm swept away in this world and I'm reliving my youth and I'm living vicariously through all these characters. And I weep when Harry and Ron finally get it on. And Wait, what what book did you read? I'm sorry. uh, Harry Potter and the Silk Sheets. Oh, this is a Uh, fanfic that you wrote? This is something Lauren Scribe Harris has been writing. (laughs) Apparently she writes Harry Potter fanfic. Oh, yeah? I think I I mentioned recently, I would rather read Harry Potter fanfic than anything ever written ever. ever. But that's... More than Harry Potter But that's not coming from someone who has ever read Harry Potter fanfic. Just in the back of my mind, it's just this perfect thing. Let's stop, and we'll come back tomorrow... And continue, because I had another question I wanted to ask, or a point that I wanted to make about YA. And uh, these are supposed to be short, okay? Okay. Okay, so, hey, thanks for joining us. We will be back tomorrow. This is the worst marathon ever. (laughs) It is officially branded WME. See you next week, folks. Or next tomorrow, sorry, next time. Next week, if they're lucky. (laughs) Bye. That gets my goat. Is produced under a Creative Commons 3.0 license. Why am I telling you this?